So Craftware, there's a couple extra steps you have to go through when you're downloading the program, so we're going to go through that right now. So you're going to want to go to Craftware, spell it like that, and then click on this link. This is Craftware Pro. You don't want to download Craftware Pro because Craftware as a company went in the direction of proprietary. We don't want that. So you can't tweak all the settings you want in Craftware Pro. So you're going to scroll down to show legacy out of date Craftware versions. And you're going to want to click whichever operating system you have. I have Windows. Download that and then install it. I have it installed already. And when you open it, it'll look like this. It'll have a little robot on it and it'll say welcome. Just grab all and delete it because you don't want that there. And just like in Cura, you have to add your files in. So I'm going to add in the same guy we were working with, which is my slug. And here we are. What you'll notice is that there's a sky. Don't know why there's a sky, but the slicer is a little different compared to Cura. So you can move it around the same exact way you would move it around in Cura. Do everything you normally would do. And things are a little different though. So the normal buttons on the left that say like move, scale, or whatever, those are on the top. And move is up here, so now I can move this wherever I want. Rotate is there, you have to grab the axis. It's kind of odd, but similar enough. Scale is there, drop to plane. I think I went over that one, but basically what that does is it drops a face to whatever surface you want. So if I want that surface to be on the ground, it weird that's only if you have misaligned objects uh, but that's unnecessary for us and then bisect means you can cut the object it's like I want to cut it there but I don't need to do that so back to move everything's here Move it right in the center so this is where things get a little weird if you want to do supports then you have to go to a different window it doesn't generate it like in Cura so you go to support and here it is here. To show you what it looks like, I'm going to just take my slug and rotate it in a weird way, just so you can see what the supports do. So there's a whole supports window, which is kind of different compared to the original. And initially you'll think, I have to add them manually. You don't have to do that. You might have to do that a little bit, but not a huge amount. This button down here is auto-generate support. You can change the thickness of the bar. You can change the angle at which it prints at. I said 45 in the training. This is set to 60. I'm gonna just go down to 45, because that's what I said. And then auto-generate support, and it'll put it really weirdly. Now you'll think it'll make a normal build plate pattern. It won't, it's weird. If it if Craftware and the Craftbots didn't use this proprietary program, I'd say use Cura, but you can't. It's kind of annoying. But we make do. So you see how this edge, it doesn't have any support on it. You're going to have to manually put that in there. I know it's it's very, very tedious, but we make, we make do with what we got. And uh, eventually it'll work. So you can clear all the supports. You can also change the size, so that was at 1.5, I make them half. Now, if, if you have a worse computer or a computer that's not as high performance, sometimes this will crash your computer. It's a lot, and I, the smaller you make it, the more detailed it'll be, but it's not gonna be perfect. That's just the one downside of Craftware compared to Cura, is that it does this, and it's rather annoying. But once you have that set up, then, it's the same as normal Kira. So I'm just gonna go back to objects. I'll use that drop button now. Drop it to plane, put it correctly. And now you go to support. You don't need to go to support, so you go to slice. You will actually see easy mode, this card. You'll see this. This is like back on Kira. It said like little details. I'm gonna show you where you can see all of your normal details, which is switch to expert mode. You really wanna do that. This is the Craftware slicing interface. It's different, so it's kind of harder to read sometimes, but it's not that bad. So this is, you'll see basic. This is where it starts as extrusion width. Compared to Cura, this is the, the first button. Let me just open Cura real quick. Okay, so this is Cura, as you saw just in the last video. It's very similar, but the menu is a little bit more annoying than this one. So like, you have your normal walls and stuff here. Quality, which is right there, is actually 
right here. So this is perfect. I can show this window. So that setting is right here. Draw speed, which is usually here, is here. The current default preset is fairly good for PLA. Now this menu can get a little weird and the settings can tweak themselves, especially on the Alienwares and the Maker Studio. So you really have to check when you're using the craft bots to make sure that they are as you want them to be. Quality is right here. If you look at infill density, that is, if I remember correctly, right here. So it's at 15%. This is at 20, similar enough. And then all of your default settings are kind of all right. Advanced, this is where it gets really complicated and you need to sort through it a little bit. But again, this one you probably don't need to mess with. This is where if you're advanced and you really know what you're doing about 3D printing, you can go through all this, but I highly suggest you don't touch any of this at least until you know 3D printing a little bit better or this is a refresher course. So foundation, this is where you change skirt, brim, and raft. So it's currently set to skirt. A nice thing about Craftware is that it shows this little preview window. Eh, it's pretty, but it works. So there's the offset, you can change that and it'll actually reflect your changes. And anything that changes green on Craftware is a setting you have modified. Unless it's saved as a preset, it'll stay green, which is helpful. So change that to five, minimum length, or you can do loops. I usually do three loops, but whatever you want to do is whatever you want to do. So there's skirt, there's brim. Uh, this thing can be a little weird sometimes, the previewer. There we go. So yeah, it's there's skirt, there's brim, and then raft is down here. Be warned, with Craftware, the first layer of the raft makes no sense. And if you know 3D printing, it makes no sense. It puts the first layer of the raft at 15%, which is horrible. The point of rafts is to make it so that it covers the surface area, as much surface area, or it gives you a bigger surface area than if you're printing with something small. But this just entirely nullifies that by making the infill density 15%, which literally gives you like that much gap between each layer line or between each drawn line. It's annoying so you're gonna to want to change that to about 50 percent because as you can see that layer gets nice and thick where if i change this to 15 you see how there's just the individual lines it makes no sense so change that to 50 at least you can put it higher if you wanted don't don't have to go all the way to 100 just food for thought so you put it on skirt you make sure all your settings are correct so normal infill speed skirt if you want uh, supports and all that their support windows different so that's the slicer so I'll go back to craftware and when i finally hit slice same kind of thing happens but like as you can see it's a little different it's a little weird and then you would have to go back to slice go to foundation change skirt it says minimum length 250 millimeters how i solve this is i always just change this to three loops put that at three loops you hit slice it solves that issue this window luckily is not much different than kira so the statistic window usually pops up behind my head right here from here you can see how long it's going to take when it'll finish based on whatever your system clock says it'll be and then how much it'll take wait all that stuff so this window is pretty much the same just like the other ones, the bars are here rather than on the right and on the bottom. So you can go through the layer here, functions the same way, and you can draw through each line. Again, functions the exact same way. This one just, it tells you where the nozzle is and same thing. And once you get everything here, it'll say save here. So you have your USB, you plug that in, and then this button will show up here, save to pen drive. And then just like with the enders, you put that on your USB or the micro SD, then you plug that into the machine. So it's pretty much the exact same. Now I'm gonna throw it back to old me again, and he's gonna finish you out. So that is it. That is everything you need to know that we can show you in this series of videos. Sign up for this workshop in person, and then we will go about teaching you how to actually work with the printer, load a spool of filament, put the file on it, and hit go. And from there, you will be certified to 3D print at our different spaces. I hope you liked all these ones. Follow our social media accounts to keep up to date on what we're doing on anything. We are expanding a lot of spaces. There's a whole lot going on. And we have 
all our different spaces. So if you're curious about anything beyond 3D printing, we have a whole lot of other resources. This is an introductory. So I hope you all enjoyed and I hope to see you in person for the workshop.